Now we'll talk about distributing when we have a negative sign. You have to be careful when this happens. When you have a negative sign, things are always a little bit trickier than they would be without it, especially when you're distributing with negative numbers. So we'll work through this example, but pay attention to what happens to the negative sign, especially right here and here as we do it. On the left, I need to distribute this. The negative 3 has to be multiplied by the 2x and by this 4, but we have to remember that that's a negative 4. So first, let's multiply the negative 3 right there by the 2x. That gives me a negative 6x. Then I take this negative 3 and multiply it by that negative 4. And negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. So the left side is negative 6x plus 12. On the right side, I have negative 7x plus 4. Nothing on the right side has changed. I'm going to get rid of all the x's now on one side. I can get rid of the x's over here on the right by adding 7x. Because this is a negative 7x, adding 7x will cancel that out. And if I add 7x on the right, I have to add 7x on the left. So let's look at the left side. Negative 6x plus 7x is 1x. And I still have this plus 12. So it's x plus 12. On the right, the negative 7x and the positive 7x add up to 0. Or in other words, they cancel each other out. So they're gone. And I just have a 4 on the right. Now to solve for x, I subtract 12 from each side. Subtracting 12 on the left and on the right. Subtracting 12 on the left cancels out the plus 12. So on the left, x is now isolated. And on the right, I have 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. x is equal to negative 8. Here's another example involving distributing with negative numbers. I'll be distributing a negative 5 on the left side and a negative 3 on the right. We'll do the left side first. I multiply the negative 5 times the 2x, and that gives me a negative 10x. Then I multiply the negative 5 times the 5. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. On the right, I multiply the negative 3 times the 3x. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and I have a negative 9x. The x is multiplied right there and there, negative 9x. Now I need to multiply the negative 3 times the negative 2. Don't forget that that 2 is negative. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. So my equation now reads negative 10x minus 25 equals negative 9x plus 6. Now to isolate x, I'm going to add 10x to each side. And whatever I add on one side, I add on the other. On the left side, the negative 10x and the positive 10x cancel each other out, leaving me with a negative 25. Don't forget that that negative sign stays on right there. On the right side, I have negative 9x plus 10x. That equals x, and I still have my plus 6. So x plus 6. Now I'm going to isolate x. I'm going to leave it over here on the right, and that's OK. I can isolate it by subtracting 6. And if I subtract 6 on the right, I subtract 6 on the left. On the right, the plus 6 and the minus 6 cancel each other out, leaving me with x on the right all by itself. x is now isolated. On the left side, I have negative 25 minus 6. And that ends up being negative 31. So x is equal to negative 31. If you want to, you can rewrite it like this, x 
equals negative 31 so that it reads left to right x equals negative 31. If you want to leave it like this, negative 31 equals x, that's okay. This is mathematically the same thing as that. A lot of people, though, do prefer to write it in the form x equals something because that's the way we naturally think of it or say it. Either way you write it, understand that that's our answer. x is negative 31. That's the value for x that we could plug into the equation here and here and have it result in a mathematical statement that is true.